Hello guys, um, on this video I'll be talking about um, our web services. Uh, this is our uh, services that we want to provide to ourselves uh, or users that might want to help us do data collection. So it's still part of our, our workflow. Um, a high overview of the web services. Uh, we're going to look at overviews of what we had discussed in the previous videos. We're going to talk about XAMP, uh, HTML server, and the weak gate on this video. So this video might be broken down in several parts depending on the links and how long it takes to set up the software. As mentioned earlier, we're still focusing on our data collection. Not only do we identify our data sources, but we're establishing methods in how to get gather these data sources. And one of the methods that we're going to be using is creating a website and maybe <coughs> use email so people can email us pictures videos of what of stuff that we need and at the same time also provide some means later on about how to go about labeling or classifying the data so we can automate some of these things so previously had mentioned the network layout that I have here and that I had uh, build. Um, what we're going to talk about is that <clears throat> I have a internet modem here, somewhere in the cloud, eh, in the Internet of Things, and Internet of Stuff. Uh, I can have a mobile, my laptop, or even some video recorder that I can use that has. Uh, access to the internet and upload or email stuff to myself or even access a web page that I'm hosting um, to do the uploads so one of the things um, and I might mention this later on is that in order to record video from let's say a mobile device I need to have uh, HTTPS which is a secured uh, HTTP uh, on the browser in order to activate the camera and in, in the later videos I'm going to show you how to do that once we establish this installation. The challenge that we'll have on this ne particular network layout is that I have a dynamic IP address assigned to me here. I don't have a static IP address so we're going to use a, a separate uh, domain name uh, dynamic IP address provider. Uh, I'll be going into those details. So if you need to do data collections for your machine learning in the same manners that I'm am, I'm doing them, uh, maybe I can give you some insights and then at the blog you can give me your feedback on the methods that you approach. So having said that, we're going to start with XAMP. XAMP is um, uh, a, an application where a group of folks got together to simplify the installation of Apache. Uh, now it's they're supporting MariaDB as the open source database. Uh, they also have PHP as a server side scripting for the web uh, website, and also Perl. I personally use PHP more so than I do Perl. Actually, I haven't used Perl for for several years now, but Exam will install all that for me. So, as part of the installation, I'm going to show you some ways to secure it, secure your installs, some secure considerations for your websites. How about doing that? Uh, how to configure Apache for HTTP? Because that's where we're going to start with this plain port 80 
serving HTTP on our local host. And then uh, configure the MariaDB is going to be real simple. It's just establish a root, pass, root, root password and then assigning some users' names. Nothing too complex on that. And then also configure PHP uh, to work within our environment uh, for the server-side scripting. So having said that, what I have done is <coughs> I have uh, created this virtual box uh, environment and downloaded some of the software ahead of time. So we have to wait, sit around and wait to download. Uh, what you could do is just type on the search bar here on your browser and go to Examp Installers and Downloads. I already done that and download the latest one. Um, you might want to come and visit this every month or every quarter to upgrade your Apache, your PHP as they release new versions, updated versions with maybe security patches uh, for those frameworks. So uh, since I have already downloaded the latest one that they had, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go through the installer. So I'm going to double click here and do the installations. I'm not 100% sure yet if I installed all the requirements for running exam yet. So I might get some uh, errors running it and I'll go pause the video, go download those and install them. So you have a little splash window there. And it says it's important to activate the user account control on your system. So some functions are going to possibly restrict it, blah, 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 blah. So this is user account control. This is pretty much saying, you know, that I should disable it, just have one main account using it. But in my case, I have already set up with a password here. And there's no way of me getting away from that. So I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to go through the setup process here. I probably won't go through the whole motions and show you guys these. I'm going to hit next. Uh, I don't use the FTP. I, won't, you know, I use the Mercury Mail Server. Uh, I'm not into Tomcat. Uh, I'm going to leave Perl for there for a minute. Uh, everything else will remain the same. So PHP, my admin, is a web interface for the database. For some reason they still have here MySQL but it's actually MariaDB. But it is what it is. <coughs> Let me hit next. I've, for this example here, for this video, I'm just going to use the default installation, which would be the root C example folder. But you may want to name this to something else if you're running a production or you want to run the production. I, that's not recommended by these team to to run an uh, exam as a production. But if you choose to run it in a semi-development framework or fr development slash production environment as I'm planning it, I mean, you could just rename this folder to whatever folder you want. <coughs> and here's I see if I want to learn more about uh, Bitnami for exam, and uh, I'm gonna say no for now. Uh, I am interested in WordPress. I think this is one of the frameworks, uh, blog frameworks that I'll be using to manage the user accounts. I think I mentioned that in the past videos. But at this point, I am not going to use that. So I'm going to hit next. And set up is now ready to do the installation. So I hit next. And it's going to go through the installation process. I'll uh, pause the video now, allow it to install, and then I continue. All right, I am back. Uh, it's finished installing. Now it's asking me if I wanted to run the control panel now. Uh, I'm going to say yes, just to show you some things. I personally don't use the control panel that much, but it is there and it's just worth mentioning because it might have some value for you guys. Um, yeah, English, hit save. So. What do we have here in the control panels? 
is these uh, module services, Apache, MySQL, Fuzzilla, Mercury, and Tomcat. So our main concerns right now is Apache and MySQL. And we want to make sure that they are started. You can come in here and start the services. But uh, what I would like to do is to actually start them as Windows would uh, restart them. If, for example, Windows was to have an upgrade and then Windows shuts down and then comes back up. Maybe do a power loss or something to restore. So uh, what I'll do is at a later video when we go into more details and these configurations, I'll demonstrate that. But uh, for now, this is just a quick way to start a patching and also start my SQL. Here it says uh, to allow access, Windows Firewalk access for Apache and allow, we just want to make sure it's only for private networks, for private networks allow. The ports that it opens up, you can see the ports here is 80, which is the regular HTTP. And then there is 440, uh, 443 port, which is our secure HTTPS. For MySQL, is at a default port at 3306. And then you have some administrative, some configurations that you can do, and the log files for the, each of these applications. So now that that uh, application servers are up and running on their own, what I would like to do is, and again, I'm just going to show you how will I approach these installs. Uh, this is a virtual environment, um, which is not going to be up and running in my end. It's just going to be running while I'm recording this video. so. I don't care for passwords or anything like that, but to be able to configure these, um, what I would want to do is go and access the web server using localhost, and it'll take me to the dashboard, and it'll have some information in here. And then the next thing what I want to do is secure my database when I go to my PHP admin as mentioned earlier uh, this is uh, a web interface to the database and what I wanted to do is go into the user accounts and I want to do is change these accounts uh, for passwords and if some of these accounts that are existing here um, you don't want to do you just might want to remove them but what you, what you want to do is to actually go in each to each one of these and uh, change the password to them where it says here no password so let's let, you can go edit privileges here. Um, sorry about that. Change the password, <coughs> and let's let's put a, a super strong password here. Actually, I'm gonna retype it here. You could also use this generate here, but for my purpose, I'm just gonna put a generic password in there. And then just hit, okay, go. Uh, I'm gonna never. <coughs> All right. So that's, uh, if I go into my user accounts, this should have at least one of my accounts here. So I gotta do it to each one of those to make sure they're all secured. 
change the passwords. percent sure what this garbo is so I'm gonna click on this one and it says remove the selected user account I'm gonna remove it okay so basically what I want, uh, I think I'm going to leave this one here for now. <coughs> I might remove this one here as well. Actually, no, because it doesn't give grant anything. Let next one I want to do is this one right here. Change that one. Again, this is securing my root. And another another layer you may want to consider re removing um, removing um, You might want to consider removing root as your login. So one of the things that's happening here that this now thing is complaining is because that changed the access to the local host, which is right here. I'm accessing the local host. What we need to do is we have to uh, navigate all the way down to C root, going into exam and go to PHP my admin here and then there will be a configuration file in here um, for right now I guess we can use um, notepad and then it says here user and then I would put in here the super duper strong password of password um, I do recommend you guys do a, a good a better password than that um, you may want to change this to something else like um, I mean co completely move exam here um, you could do like um, That'll be your your blowfish secret. Blowfish trick secret is the encryption used. Uh, hit save, close it out. Now you can go back here, and you should uh, be able to be access be able to access the the database again now that you updated them. So um, let me do this. Let me let me pause it here. I'm gonna install Notepad plus plus on this because it's easier for me. Uh, to visually show you guys some things uh, I'll be right back all right <clears throat> I'm back here at uh, I finished installing notepad plus uh, plus I'm gonna exit out of this release notes so now what we have done um, let me close this one out is we secured our database now what we want to do is do a little bit of uh, configurations on the Apache server and then also follow by configuring the PHP so 
what I'm going to do is right here, it says Apache, the port, stops admins, and then they have this configuration. Um, let's do this first. Actually, let's browse it. And what we're going to do is go into the bin. And then we are going to look for my INI file, which it escapes my eyes at the moment. Yeah. Config. And in here, we are going to open this with Notepad++. So, one of the things that we want to do is uh, change the contact information when they get an error page while you're setting this up. So let's say we go to localhost slash TMP and it says object not found the requested URL that you provided you know did not match and then you have this right here that says webmaster if you look towards the bottom right here you're going to see that this link has a mail to postmaster at localhost then it has localhost here and it has additional information there about your server. So what we want to do is we want to configure this webmaster link, email link to one of our links. So what we want to do is we're going to scroll down here a bit. And uh, anything here that you see a pound and this here is their comment areas. This explains this is the server root. You can change that to wherever the, you installed Apache. Um, <coughs> we're going to scroll down until we find this guy right here, server admin. What I'm going to have is we're going to have webmaster at my virtual.serve stgp.com so this domain here is going to be my domain that I'll be hosting on this virtual environment <coughs> so naturally my email address anything that dealing with the website will have webmaster at my virtual dot serve http.com uh, everything else I think we're okay uh, we might want to come back and update the domain but that will be another video but this is one definitely one of the emails that you want to do because once you start opening up your website to the world and they start hitting you they'll see this email address and that's where you're going to be getting that email address they'll be contacting you on this email address All right? couple other things that you may want to consider too is um, once you're here is to review the um, security configurations um, if you looked at the panel here it said that it opened up port 443 for you to secure to have an HTTPS service provided for you and on this http.config file, towards the bottom, it gets you some redirects onto these configuration files. Uh, and it tells you, for example, if you want to host multiple domains, you use virtual hosts. But it also tells you that you need to use the SSL uh, config files in order to do your configuration for secure networks, which is right here secure SSL 
TLS connections here. So that is saying that it's on the config extra folder and that file right there. So when you go in here, this is where you'll do your configurations for that 443 for HTTP service. And it's right here that listening on that port some SSO cipher suites and proxy cipher suites and so on and so forth so we'll be going doing some of these configurations in a later video on how did you could do how you can enable this especially when you have dynamic HTTPS so here the server name here I guess we could just update it virtual uh, virtual dot serve com, and then uh, you're going to get this web master at that some locations for some error logs you may want to make sure you keep track of what those error logs are and then where your certificates, your secure certificates will, will and your key certificates will reside in. Um, and you hit save on that. Hit save on this. <coughs> Let's see here, we could find the domain. Let's do find domain. Uh, that's fine. We, we will leave that for now because we are using localhost for this video example. So after you make changes, what you want to do is you want to stop the Apache and then you want to start it back up and make sure that it comes up. If there's any errors, what uh, it'll pop up a message saying that you have an error. All right, so one thing that you don't see here is PHP. So PHP is a script engine. Um, so it's only executed once you execute the compiler. Um, so you go in here under XAMPP and you scroll down here to PHP. One of the things that you want to change if you're gonna be writing scripts in PHP is the time zone so here you might want to look for i think it's date and time find out current uh maybe it's just date you want to update your date and time here to match your your location so if you want to know more locations other than the one that I'll be using, uh, you can do a search on this here by going PHP date time zones. Um, and once the search comes up, uh, you get the list of all the time zones. So in my case, it'll be America, Chicago. I'm in central time. Uh, let's see, it's right here. Hit copy. And what I want to do is I want to go over here and change this. Make sure there's no spaces here. Hit save. Um, there might be some email options here that we might address later on. But at the moment, the next thing that you may want to do here, since we are in the development, is we want to uh, find our our error logs. So, by default, it's by default it's uh, disabled. So, 
what you want to do is enable it by removing that semicolon and hit save and that log will will there will be a folder created here saying logs and it'll start creating this PHP error logs. Now if you were to go in the production environment you want to reduce the amount of data that goes into these log files by disabling it and it should improve you have some minor improvements on your performance. So we'll be visiting PHP INI again because once we start dealing with uploading videos and large images we need to increase the file size allowable for uploads and we'll be revisiting that here later on. So that pretty much sums up the XAMPP installation. It's up and running. Maybe in a later video will discuss how to run Apache and the database in the actual Windows services. So when Windows goes down and then it recovers, it'll the Apache and the database will come up as part of a regular services and continue to work once the network is up. Uh, any questions on this part? I'm gonna um, I'm gonna party split the video here, and then continue on the second part, which will be talking about HTML server, where we're gonna be setting up our email uh, email server, and we'll go from there.